I think that, you know, the, the Democrats start with an advantage because uh, women have tended to vote with the Democrats for, you know, at least 20 years because women tend to be more in favor of big government. They tend to care more about social programs. Um, and, and, and so I, I actually think that the Democrats probably don't need to work quite as hard to win women because they have the natural advantage being the party of bigger government. So Republicans, you know, what they could do, it, it's, um, well, if, I, I think, you know, if Romney can convince the American public that he really has the solution for unemployment, and the, the solution for jump-starting the economy, there, there are plenty of women voters, I think, who would pay real attention to that, who would sit up and pay attention if they became convinced. What's interesting to me about, about Ann Romney and, and about Mitt Romney as well is, um, you know, there's the question of to what extent he should talk about his religion. And I, I don't know the answer to that. There was an editorial in the New York Times arguing that he needs to get out there and talk about his Mormon religion, uh, just because other people may be, and so that he should work to define what his religion means to him. And one of the interesting things about Mormonism is that there is a proclamation on the family that was issued that pretty much dictates, that directs that the husband should be the household leader and the household provider and that the wife is in charge of the home space and should be in charge of nurturing the children. And so it's a pretty much, and this is true in many religions, it's a statement of belief that the woman's place primarily is raising children and that the man's place primarily is, um, is bringing in the household income. And, and this is a vision that is not what many Americans are actually living in their families. An increasing number of women are the breadwinners in their households. So, and, and I interviewed Mormons as a part of my research, and I spoke to one woman who is a, a believing, active member of the Mormon church. She teaches Sunday school. She's the breadwinner in her uh, family, and she doesn't agree with the proclamation on the family. She thinks, she thinks that it was a political declaration that really isn't in keeping with what the church is really about. So is that what he thinks? I, I don't know. Um, but it is, it is something to, it's interesting. There, there have been some pieces written on this, but not a lot. So what are his views on working women and a woman's place? Obviously their setup has worked for them as a family and that's great. Um, but what, what would he do for working women? What would he do for single women, for single moms? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know the answers to that, but I, I would be interested to hear him talk about it You know, beyond jump-starting the economy, which, uh, which we all agree would be a good thing. In terms of women as breadwinners and women as um, you know, economic engines to their households, I think the Obama campaign has certainly um, seized upon that as an issue. In April, the White House had a, and I suppose it was the White House and not the Obama campaign, but it's sometimes hard you know, to tell the difference always. They had a, a day-long forum on what the administration has done for women. And one of the things that the president really stressed is the growing number of women who are the breadwinners in their households. He talked about um, his own grandmother and his mother, who were both at various times the breadwinners in their households. So, uh, and he talked about his wife, Michelle, and her work family issues when their children were younger. So he definitely is invoking um, breadwinning women in his own life as a, as a a constituency that needs to be reckoned with and taken into consideration and making the argument that Democrat policies, that his policies would, would help them more through things like pay equity, um, the fight against discrimination, against pay discrimination and other forms of discrimination. Romney, in, in trying to change the subject from reproductive issues, when he said, you know, my wife Anne is my proxy for, which she goes out there and she talks to him and she tells me what they care about and what they care about is the economy. And I think that was an attempt in part to change the subject from reproductive issues because that was getting out of hand. But it's also true. And in, in my book, in the research I was doing for my book, I interviewed a lot of women who had become the breadwinners in their households because of the recession. Their husbands had been thrown out of work. Maybe these women were working before, but they ratcheted up their work hours or they re-entered the workforce and they've been under an enormous amount of pressure in the past two or three years. 
And so it's true. I mean, of course women care about the economy. Um, and I think though where he was wrong was in making this argument that um, Obama has hurt women because all these men's jobs are the ones that have come back. Well, we know that men lost way more jobs during the recession than women did. So it would be to expected that men's jobs, which tend to be in manufacturing and construction, would come back first. Um, but women, the women who are married to these men, who have been the mainstays now of their households for, for several years now, are really happy that their men's jobs are coming back. So sometimes this attempt to say, well, there's women's jobs and there's men's jobs and there's a woman's economy or a man's economy, it's not true. I mean, these are families who are trying to make it through. And women have really stepped up to support their households even more than they were doing during the recession. And to the extent that they're, that they're plight can be eased a little bit, it's a good thing that men's jobs are coming back.